Okay, so this is lesson 11, and if you went ahead and tried to write out your write node, so if I come over here and click on this and I hit render, uh, you'll notice that the actual progress will actually uh, stop rendering after frame 2. And you can go into your actual log to find out the error messages. But you'll see it says not responding. It's like, well, what happened? You're going to get all angry and be like, what's going on? Well, this is actually a happy accident because it's something you'll bump into many times in production, and that is basically a paradox loop. So what does that mean? Well, again, it's a fancy name I've called it. I'm sure there's some know-it-all compositor out there kind of, uh, you know, frowning right now and says, oh, it's called this. But basically uh, what it is is it's where you have uh, information coming in. In this case, this is the EXR sequence. And it's coming through here, it's coming through this process, it's merging in, and then this information is coming back up through here, uh, through these two nodes, and then it's coming through this guy right here and merging back into this merge. So it's kind of looping into itself. And because of that, the computer freaks out and doesn't know what to do. So our problem child is this little ro uh, railroad track right here. This is where those flashing screens get added in. And it's because we're feeding in information that has already gone down the pipe, but then is added later on in the pipe. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit strange, like you could see right here, right? See this input here? This is further down the pipe, right? Coming through here, coming down here. There's also this pipe here that's connected to this. So there's a pipe going this way, pipe going this way, and yet they're connected. So it's, it's a bit strange um, in the mist, so we need to basically break this off. Now you could, uh, you know, want to come in here, and in this case I'll paste this right node I created, and you might want to do like a switch node, right? And you could, you know, make this a switch. So for instance, I could take this and put this to like input one or zero, and put this to input two, and then plug this into the switch, right? So you could be like, okay, there, and then I'll just uh, basically have this information, go ahead and write this out really quick. See, I can kind of plug it right there. And then just switch it to number one after that and make this a read node by just taking this write node and clicking on, uh, you know, read all lines or whatever, just read node. And in, by, or, I'm sorry, read file. So when you read file, it'll make a read file on here. It's not going to work. If there's any physical connection, it will still error out. So what we have to do is we're going to write out this here, this information. And I basically named it, uh, I put it in a different folder. It's under flashing folder. It still has the same name as the other file up at the top, which is milestone number one, but I just have it under a different folder. So there's a subfolder called flashing. This one up here is going to milestone one, milestone one. So... Um, I'm just going to put this in the flashing folder, and I'm going to hit render. Now, I've already rendered this, okay, uh, so this is like a cooking show, and all I need to do now is make a read node, so I'll hit R for read, and in this case, I'm going to grab my, uh, let's see, here's my flashing, I'm going to take that sequence, and you can see it's reading off my D drive, blah, 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 so I, I'm, for, for you guys, for your sake, I'm going to copy my root structure goodie and throw that in there. There we go. So you can see if I put my viewer to it, it's basically the flashing screens um, in, in the shot. So if we kind of take a look, there should be some flashing in here, I think. Yeah, it's like very, very lightly flashing. And now what I'm going to do is plug this into the read node and do this here. So if I ever need to see a live feed of this, I will just have to disconnect this and, you know, connect it here, basically. But if I want to actually render it, I physically have to separate this. I cannot use a switch note. It'll still error out when you do this. So now that this footage is actually uh, rendered out, this, this circuit has been cut, so to speak, um, we should be good to go. So again, you'll come back to your right uh, render node here and hit render, and hit OK. And now you'll see we'll get past frame 2 in this case. So there's frame 2, and then we've got frame 3, and so on and so forth. 
So again, I, I'll let this render through, but in the le next lesson, we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead and uh, keep working on our color correction. But I wanted you guys to be aware that there is there is basically sort of a paradox loop. Again, a best way to describe it in a sort of a relative terms is as if you went back in time and shot your grandfather, you would never be born. So how could you shoot your grandfather? So that's what's happening here. You're going through this sort of loop, but it's you could say it's a temporal loop. But it's it's the way at which the ordering is occurring that is requiring us to break the circuit. So these are just common things, and you're going to have to set up little milestones that are pre-rendered uh, in there. But you have to physically break the actual connection. So again, a learning a, a good learning experience, and just something to uh, FYI.